apparently if you don't fall in love with me right away, I get to, I whittle you down. I'm pretty sure it's the same way I got my wife, so. <laughs> Put a pin in it. Look at that. Are we here? Am I on? Oh, you look phenomenal now. Oh, good. And you're at well, your. We did it from the desktop. I tried to like do like a whole nice background for you guys yeah, with yeah. like Power Ranger masks and stuff, but like my phone apparently isn't having it. So we were just saying how uh, cell phone cell phones have not evolved. And they've peaked. They're here now, and they're not getting any better. They don't, they don't even care. No. It's like they don't even care about us. No. I need to have everything at my fingertips all the time. Right? right? It's going to space. Would you give it a second? <laughs> no, I will not. <laughs> um, I was I was warned. We were talking about you. First of all, thank you for giving us your time tonight. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. There's no thanks needed. And uh, so I was talking about it, and, and there's someone in the chat who's really pumped about it, really pumped to have you on. And I was explaining, like, I ran across your TikTok and my nerd alert alarm went off in my head. And I was like, holy crap. I remember this person from Three Ninjas. And, and that's what clicked it with me. And then Vanessa brought your name up to me and said, hey, let's try to get this, this Michael Lasky on because of this MMA and all this other stuff. And we'll get to that. And... I was like, yeah, I know him. I, I follow him on TikTok. <laughs> but I didn't follow you on TikTok. You just must have been showing up in my algorithm. I must have been watching, you know, watching time, the minutes, and you just kept showing up and showing up. So I assumed I followed you. And then okay. when I was getting links today for the show, I clicked on your TikTok link and it was like, no, you don't follow him. I was like, wow, that's weird. So the guy in the chat goes, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell your guests that at all tonight. And I was like, not only am I going to tell him, I'm going to lead off the entire interview with it. That works perfectly. You know, the magic of the TikTok algorithm yeah. is that it tends to find the right people. Not, necessar not necessarily a lot of people, right. but the right ones. So yeah. apparently I was the right one for you. Do you care to explain? I... I don't – I liked how your TikToks came across. First of all, you were cutting a lot of promos at this time. I think it was leading up to the red, ver the Ranger fight, the red versus right. blue, and your cadence I loved. Uh, obviously, you're an actor, so you're, you're, you're very comfortable in front of the camera. That's what came across – and I don't know, you just kept showing up and then all of a sudden you were gone and I, I don't know why. And now I do know why, but I fixed, well, you it. know, apparently, apparently if you don't fall in love with me right away, I get to, I whittle you down. I'm pretty sure it's the same way I got my wife. So <laughs> you and my wife, you have something in common. Yeah. yeah. It's like, a, it's like a, 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 like a, what do they call those barnacles on a boat or something? <laughs> That's right. Something like that. <laughs> I'm just as pretty and just as illegal to transfer across state lines. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. But long story short, I now follow you. So Well, I'm um, grateful. I'm glad I finally earned it. It's an honor. A tip <laughs> of the hat and a little bit of a wag of the finger. Let's be real. Yeah, exactly. You should have followed me a long time ago, my man. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, but my, my another thing I, I'm really wondering is um, what was it like to save Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Um, just, just so you all remember, I saved the Hulkster. That's right. Um, no, it was, uh, it was really awesome. You know, getting, I mean, getting to work with such a legend as the Hulkster period, the Hulkster and Jim Barney That's right. um, yeah. are both dream come trues. Uh, and the fact that I got to do it all at one time before the age of 18 is <laughs> is even better. Um, some of my favorite memories of situations like that are just like, you know, the Hulkster is a big dude. Um, right. And when you're 15, he's like twice as big. So just, just seeing that humans can get that big is ridiculous. Uh, he brought the big show to uh to the set one day and oh. i just remember them just sharing a gallon of milk <laughs> and it looked like they were just holding regular cups <laughs> like i was it was amazing oh. it's like people can grow that big yeah 
did you were did you know anything? Were you a wrestling fan? Did you even know like who they were before that at all? Um, so I I have a part of my fight lineage comes directly from um, from wrestling, uh, but before I had gotten into. Uh, that type of martial arts is when I was on Three Ninjas. Okay. So I had a familiar familiarity with uh, Hulk Hogan. I had a lot of friends that were into that kind of work wrestling, um, and they were, you know, obviously huge fans. Andre the Giant, of uh, uh, Hulk Hogan, and, and every in that whole debacle. So like, I I knew of him. Um, I was at a lot of parties where WrestleMania was like featured. Uh, but as far as like me being a fan personally of him, I guess that's why I wasn't very starstruck and I was able to keep my composure um, because I only really got into that kind of style of wrestling after I got into shoot wrestling and catch as catch can. And that's when I really learned where the sport was coming from. Right. So I, have, I think I have a lot more affinity for him now and that sport more so than I did when I was actually on set, which, you know, I probably would have peed my pants. So it's, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> um, you talked about the martial arts aspect um, and, the, and then the shoot wrestling uh, leads you into MMA. Um, is, is that why you, you turned into and you wanted to venture into this MMA field and, and get into fighting? Because that's the next well, step. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd been studying um, shoot wrestling and catch as catch can, um, as well as you know different styles of stand up and everything like that since since about twelve years old, since uh, since like right after um, Three Ninjas, and then I it just got to a point in my life where I was like, you know what, if I don't do it now, I'm never gonna do it. Um, so I just fully put my head down and damned you know damned the britches and, and went straight in. Um, and, and luckily it worked well for me. You know, I was ranked number one, uh, in the state of Utah, number third on the West coast at sort of my peak. Um, and, and, uh, you know, I'm really proud of, of what we've accomplished through there, but yeah, if it wasn't for like shoot wrestling, catch wrestling and all that stuff, uh, I wouldn't have had the background and the confidence, uh, to even get started. Insane. Now, uh, my note guy told me, uh, your, let me get this straight. Your adoptive adoptive i think that's the right word mother uh is the goddaughter of bruce lee yeah well i grew up um with uh with diana lee Nasano as well as ron balicki from about the age of 12 um they taught me um different styles of martial arts separate from the traditional styles of martial arts um so it, it's it was a great experience and that's what kind of got me um into the different styles of martial arts and eventually led me into mma yeah, I think I heard you on another show, and uh, you said that you felt like that's what Bruce Lee might have, where he saw martial arts going into that blend, into that MMA style with all the different. Uh, yeah, I mean, me personally, obviously, I can't speak for uh, you know anyone, right. anyone else, um, as far as like what Bruce Lee would have wanted, and I never met him, right? Right. I mean. He died in 1973, and I was born 10 years later. So right. it's not like I know exactly where right. Bruce Lee was going with things. But I think the logical next step for uh, for his philosophy of martial arts, JKD, was to move directly into uh, mixed martial arts. I don't see how it could it could it couldn't have gone anywhere else. Right. Um, so that's why you know I, I thought that it was it, for my training. The next best step would be actually take it a step further. Um, go a little bit further beyond um, some of where the students are taking it now and actually try to apply that stuff um, in a cage set environment uh, where, you know, there there are no what ifs, right? Mm -hmm. You either win or you lose. And I've won some and I've lost, lost some. And, you know, that's, that's part of the game. Yeah. Um, I think you said something. Uh, you're not here for the fame. You're here for scars and... That's right. I'm here for the scars and stories. Scars and Always stories. Always here for the scars and stories. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, MMA. So, so your big bang, Mike Olasky. Uh, did you give yourself that nickname? Did your school like? How does that nickname come about? So, I, you know, I think a lot of uh, a lot a lot of the way you get your nicknames in uh, MMA, I would imagine, is probably similar um, to work style of wrestling. Right? There's a little bit of a uh, there's a little bit of bravado. There's a little bit of uh, fan interest. And then there's a little bit of uniqueness. 
Um, the way we sort of came up with the idea of Big Bang, if I'm being absolutely honest, is that nobody had it. <laughs> um, you know, there can only be so many pit bulls. There can be only so many assassins. <laughs> there can only there can only there can only be so many soul crushers. Um, Big Bang was a name uh, that really spoke to me and the people that I was training with um, because I'm a fan of science. Um, I'm a fan of hitting things, and uh, you know, if not actually um, creating children, then participating in the activities that children might be created in. <laughs> well said. Well said. Um... MMA five-time champ, I believe. Uh, correct. For my calculations, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. A nine and three record. Uh, yeah, I think we're nine and four now. Nine but and, yeah, nine pretty, and four. Pretty close to that. I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up again. So my nerd alert went off. Obviously, uh, when I find out the red Power Ranger uh, is taking on I th the blue Power Ranger, the lesser of the blue Power Rangers, but the blue Power Ranger. Wait. Uh, the build-up, I was into it. I was getting excited. I was living vicariously, as I said, your promos, your TikTok. But sadly, I would like... Okay, first of all, was that your biggest fight to date? Um, I would say that that's the most hype fight. Right. I think it's... I think it's really hard to say. For me, it's really hard to say that it's the biggest fight. I don't... I personally don't consider that my biggest fight. Okay. Um, mainly because it was not for, like... A real title right it was just me fighting another actor right. for a made-up title right um so me personally i wouldn't consider that the biggest fight ever i'm sure he would but like i i wouldn't consider that my biggest fight now um but it was definitely like the biggest fight that uh, people actually cared about if right. that makes sense that does it does make sense now i was shocked um when i saw the outcome um is there what I mean? Is there any reason? I, I'm not good at this. Quite I ha, don't have MMA guys on. Just answer. Just answer it honestly. I won't take it. I won't take by any offense by it. You don't even need any tact. I'm happy to answer. Anything I I want. I would like to know what went wrong and why you didn't come out on top. Um, you know the the thing with MMA and one of the most fun aspects about MMA is that anybody can win for any reason. Um, you know, you have, you have gloves that are like two to four ounces max. And sometimes people land punches earlier than you expect. Um, sometimes there are complications leading up to fights that, uh, that you don't expect and you can't account for. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, train for a fight when, you know, you're on the set of Star Wars. Um, but there are no real excuses that can happen uh, in these fights. You know, when somebody lands a good punch, you land a good punch. And, and the difference between MMA and any other fight game in the world is that one punch can be all it takes. And uh, as much as I would like for have for that result to have been different, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, I didn't lose or that he didn't win. It 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 absolutely is what it is. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, sometimes the bad guys win. Uh, as as we know, and yeah. that's that's just what happens sometimes. Uh, will there be a rematch? Um, I don't know that there will be a re rematch. I'm not sure that. I mean, I, I think you would have to ask Blake that question. Um, I mean, it's not it's not something that I'm saying that I would never do again. Um, I would say that if we if if the rematch was something that was on the table, um, I think that the behind the scenes contract stuff would be ha would have to be a little bit different. Um, the match was originally set to take place at 185, and he bumped it up to 205, mm -hmm. sort of at the last minute. So I think I would, I would, um, I would need for him to come down towards me instead of me going all the way up towards him. Um, it's not something that I'm against, but uh, I'm not sure that that's that that's something that's in the cards and in the future. Interesting. Um, you mentioned Star Wars back there. Uh, huge Star Wars fan here. The Book of Boba Fett uh, was better than I was expecting, so I was really pumped about that. You, my dear friend, uh, one of the Tusken Raiders in that series, um, when did you find out that you were going to be in this, and how long did you have to keep it a secret? Because I'm sure you had to do all that. Um, gosh, I mean, I, I, had, I kept 
I had to keep it a secret for like the entire year. Um, I actually didn't even know what I was going to do on mm-hmm. Star Wars until I showed up to the wardrobe fitting. Um, they pretty much just contacted me uh, and, you know, they wanted me to do some staff and stick stuff. Uh, so I sent them an amalgam of different stick or staff styles because I had no idea what I was auditioning right. for. And they wouldn't really tell me anything. Um, and then they liked it and I booked the part. And like I said, it was only probably two weeks before actually showing up to shoot uh, that I came in for the wardrobe fitting. And I was like, oh, okay, apparently I'm a Tuscan Raider. So the, the weird thing about Star Wars was that I, I, I think that Star Wars is such a big project that they don't even, uh, they don't, they just offer parts and they're like, if you, if you want it, you want it. If you, if you don't, you don't, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I had no idea what was going on. Middle of COVID, we drove down there and, uh, and yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we found out we were Tuscan Raiders like Same. two weeks before the, before the shoot. Are you a fan of Star Wars? Uh, I, I am a fan of Star Wars. I've always understood star, the, the appeal to Star Wars as far as like being, being a go-to, um, right. uh, a go-to franchise for me. Probably not so much. Um, you know, I'm more of a Doctor Who fan. Oh, a- oh yeah. <laughs> uh, that's just me personally. Uh, but I, I love, I love Star Wars. I love what it's done for swordplay. I love how I have a lot of friends that are super close, uh, to the franchise. Um, so being a part of it is just an honor and a privilege. Oh man. So I didn't even have any doctor who stuff on here. That's awesome. On my porch, uh, my front door, you go out and there's like a porch and a deck to the left of my door is like this wooden. It's like, I don't know what it is, but it's like an L shaped and it's all wooden. And what we did was my daughter, I have three daughters. One of them, the oldest one for her ninth birthday when she was nine wanted to have a Doctor Who birthday party because she loves Doctor Who. So we bought a TARDIS tablecloth and we did the party and whatnot. I saved the tablecloth, have put it over this thing and like stapled it to it. So it just looks like the TARDIS is sitting on my front porch. You would nice. not believe all the remarks I get. Love the <laughs> TARDIS. Love the TARDIS. The mailman just is in total in love with it. Um, yeah. Huge Doctor Who fan. Phenomenal. The Whovians are, are sleepers, man. The hooligans, they'll get you. you know, every time, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I have to catch up. I'm a little bit behind um, just because my daughter's getting older and just things get so much more busier. Uh, I will catch up. Um, But, yeah, great stuff there. Doctor Who, we can do that all day. A little, little <laughs> that, little ba- Battlestar Galactica. Um. <laughs> Can you speak Tuscan Raider language? Can you talk like them or? Uh, no, actually, uh, they they didn't um, they didn't really teach us much of any of like the language or anything. Um, I know uh, I know that they incorporate a lot of um, the Native American or Indigenous peoples uh, sign language yeah. that predates ASL um, into uh, into the actual language. Um, but we didn't we didn't have parts that necessarily needed to have those like uh, being more being more physically oriented. Right. We really didn't have to have like any kind of character interaction. Um, so I can't really speak um, Tuscan, I guess if, if if that's what they call that's it. Uh, but but what I can do is I, I speak fluent gaffy stick, so I can beat you up with a gaffy stick. <laughs> do you have one? Did they style. let you keep one? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't let me keep one from the set, but I got sent a uh, gaffy stick to train with nice. uh, to prepare for the part. And that's that's the one I have up in my martial arts studio right now um, nice. that we constantly have to slap the kids' hands off of <laughs> every time they want to touch and play Is, with it. That's at the OMA Ranger Academy. I got that correct? Correct. Yeah, the OMA Ranger Academy right here in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Spectacular. So... Not only were you a child actor, three ninjas, uh, as we mentioned. Oh, then you you know you, you get older, you do the the Star Wars, Star Trek stuff. But you're also uh, breeding the next uh, batch of martial martial artists, uh, as if that's the correct language um, of of young children, right? I mean, that's yeah, the mission well, statement. Mean, part of part of the whole um, part of the whole life cycle, I think, of a martial artist is is 
student warrior teacher. And um, mm -hmm. if you're going to complete that cycle, everybody eventually ends up in the same place, which is sitting on a chair as an old man with a long beard, not being able to do, mu do much, just instructing other people on how to pass that knowledge on to the next generation. Um, so, you know, I'm starting to move on into that aspect of things and, and making sure that, uh, that martial arts lives on a lot longer than, than I do. Mm -hmm. So, cause I mean, we all know that I'm going to, that, uh, I'm going to die of like liver disease or something early. So <laughs> we've got to get it, got to get it in now. <laughs> we, do, we, we do know that that's going to happen. I mean, it's, I, I call it a premonition. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I liked the, the, the student teacher, student warrior teacher. Was that the order? Student, student warrior teacher. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was very star Wars ish, uh, for sure. Um, well, and it makes sense yeah. because star Wars draws a lot of, um, of, uh, inspiration from, uh, Japanese Kabuto style, Japanese old school, Japanese, uh, samurai style films. And, so that I mean, it makes complete sense. Yeah, uh, we did mention Star Trek a little bit back there. I'm not the biggest uh, Star Trek fan, but I do have someone in the chat here, Marie Shadows, who is a big Star Trek fan, and she would like me to ask you: uh, Do you appreciate it? Were you a fan? Um, and in what you what did you do? What what part did you play in Star Trek? Um, I played a uh, Star Trek. Mako or a, a, an Enterprise Mako warrior in uh, Star Trek Enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, so apparently there were the this elite group of um, anti like intergalactic anti terrorists. Um, I ended up saving Scott Bakula and uh, ultimately sacrificing my life for uh, for the Enterprise. And since Enterprise is a pre is a prequel, I always joke with all of my all of my Trekkie friends that I'm like. Technically, since I saved Scott Bakula, I saved the galaxy. Um, none of your favorite Star Trek shows would be available without me. So, <laughs> just just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I played I played what's called a Mako, and uh, um, it was it was a fun thing. I, I fought I fought a Zindi. We got in a good good tussle, and he ended up nice knifing me in the stomach mm. and throwing me down a hatch. So man, it sounds so much fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I think the only the only sad thing is that I I, I wasn't wearing a red uniform when I got killed. Ah. And I knew I was going to die when I took the part, but I was kind of hoping, like fingers crossed, that I'd get to wear the red when dying. But, you know, just wasn't in the cards, I guess. Next time. Next time. <laughs> next time. Yeah. When they kill me next time in Star Trek. <laughs> next time they kill you on Picard. <laughs> uh, I love it. You can wear the red. Um, Strange worlds. They find me again. <laughs> right? Yeah, different time, different universe. Yeah. A lot of multiverse stuff going on, for sure. Um, we mentioned TikTok to kick off this, this spot here. Uh, how do you utilize TikTok in everything that, that you have going on? Your school, your acting, your MMA. How do you utilize that in social media? I, you know, the weird thing about TikTok is, uh, you know, I, I got on TikToks, literally, TikTok literally just start sending videos of dogs to my wife. <laughs> um, and then I just decided that TikTok was going to be the most, like, authentic version of me that I'm willing to, uh, that I'm willing to present online. Uh, a lot of my social media is manicured, like, you know, I have a personal Facebook page and a, and a professional Facebook page, and then my Instagram is pretty professional. Uh, but you know, when it was coming on TikTok, it wasn't like it, it, then it wasn't like a super huge platform in the way it is now. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to say everything that I think, and if I think it, I'm going to say it. And oddly enough, it became the most uh, prominent social media platform that i personally have i mean we're we're approaching probably about four hundred thousand followers um which you know i think when you do the math on it, it makes me like the second most followed power ranger underneath jason david friend so uh which is which is weird because right. everybody tells me that i should manicure my um my social media presence more but when it's unmanicured everybody seems to like it more 
so I don't know what to do. I think you said it perfectly. You said you want it to be the most authentic version of you, and I think that's what drew me uh, before I followed you. It was drew me to all your TikToks was that you came off so real and authentic, and and I was like, man, this guy's great, and I think maybe I saw something on Three Ninjas. I was like, I remember that. And, and, and just all of this. And, and, and I think that is the way to go. And uh, I mean, kudos to you. It's just, it's great stuff for sure. Well, you know, it's, it's very, it's very revealing um, to like, to give certain parts of yourself and certain parts of your mind that you've been, that a lot of people have been telling you, cause I've been, you know, I've been acting since I was six years old and it's from the early nineties, obviously a manicured approach to uh, promoting yourself has been the way to go. Um, and I think a lot of people who don't understand this nowadays that, you know, being authentic and real and approachable um, is, is much more beneficial. Uh, and I didn't realize that until I was just like, well, this one's just for me. If you hate the stuff that I say, good for you. You can follow me on Instagram because all of that stuff isn't on Instagram. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're nearing the end of the show here, Mike. First of all, you've been an absolute authentic pleasure to have on. Um, I would like to ask you this one last question before I give you the mic and you can put over anything you want. Let us know what you got going on. Um, but who is the best Batman? Um, the best Batman is Wilfred L as Batman Beyond. Ooh, that's our first one for Batman Beyond. Well done. Is that is that, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Nope. I don't know. You see the stream. Is everybody mad at me right now? No, no. Oh, somebody said Christian fucking Bale. So I guess <laughs> they didn't like that pick. Um, yeah. I personally, I can't ever remember who I picked. I I, I don't. I think maybe I picked uh, Michael Keaton. Mike, Mike, I mean, Michael Keaton is a good one. Don't get me wrong. But you know what? Like Batman Beyond for me was like this great, um, this whole, this great story about a man coming to terms with his age. We talked about um, being a student, being a warrior and then oh, being a teacher. Point. So it's very, it's a very beautiful arc for Bruce Wayne. And then having a new person come in and fill those shoes, but still have like the shadow of the legacy on top of him and, and him doing great. I mean, one of my favorite episodes of that character was when uh, when his suit no longer worked. I can't remember if it was stolen, he didn't have it, or it no longer worked. And he uh, and he says he says to Bruce Wayne, he says, "I always wondered whether or not the suit made me made me Batman, or whether or not I was Batman." And uh, I think that that was like the best thing that somebody can say to me because, like, I think I think I think Batman is is what somebody does not necessarily the gadgets or gizmos they have right. um so that's that's the reason sort of for that pick. well done yeah well thank you yeah i like that um yeah so you've been awesome phenomenal well, thank you you're a, <laughs> you are a great human being um I would, I would i would curtsy but i'm already sitting exactly i'm standing because as we found out earlier i had to continue that gimmick of the standing streamer which i started a long time ago when i was playing actual games on here uh so i can know i, I have to keep standing but i guess that's good for me allegedly i don't know but it's at <laughs> right it's at that time of the show i'm going to give you the mic now you can put over anything you want let us know what you got coming up. Plug your O and A or, or or anything. It doesn't matter to me. The floor is yours. I will not interrupt. Well, thank you guys. It's such an honor and a privilege to be on this show. Thank you so much for asking, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you everybody who's listening right now to my dumb and to listening to my dumb voice and my dumb face. I appreciate you guys every day. Um, I'm on social media all the time. Uh, if you don't already follow me. Um, you're probably going to eventually because I continue to do it and I'm always in your face about it. Um, follow me on TikTok at Big Bang Mike. Um, my Instagram at Big Bang Mike underscore. You can follow me on Facebook at Big Bang Mike Rocks. Um, I go to Comic-Cons occasionally. Uh, it's not necessarily my jam. I don't do it a lot. 
Um, but just if you're following those social medias, you kind of get, get in lockstep with what I'm doing um, and, uh, and where I'm going. If you guys have a chance to see me in person, uh, don't hesitate to come up to me and say hi, whether it be at a Comic-Con or whether you just see me in a damn Walmart. So, um, guys, it's, it's, the pleasure is absolutely mine because I'm a greedy person and I'm taking it all, all the way from my hosts. Spectacular. Have yourself a wonderful night. Thank you for giving us your time and thank your wife for letting us borrow you for the night. <laughs> uh, I will definitely do that and I'm sure she is grateful as well. Have yourself a wonderful night. We'll see you around. All right, you guys have a good night. Yep, peace. Oh, spectacular stuff, Vanessa.